Hello and welcome to another budget and legged video. Now we have a 2000 and well a 2000 Nissan Almira behind us just past the NCT and as he was driving at home it made a big kind of crunch slash banging noise so he was kind of lucky in one way because at least he doesn't have to go back and get the NCT sorted it's passed but something happened on his way back home now hopefully you'll be able to pick up this noise just put the old microphone close to it um, the drive shaft or the CV joint has failed in some kind of a way um, I don't know what way there's a few ways it could have done as the drive shaft goes in now be careful careful and there's a little clip that retains the actual shaft into the CV joint no matter what I'm saying now I can't keep a straight face anyway um, so that clip could have come off which is causing there's too much movement uh, there could have been damage the end of the actual drive shaft or there could be damage in the actual CV joint now the problem is he needs his car for work and I can't afford to have the car stuck on the lift for a couple of days and it's impossible to know what it is without completely stripping it but if I have to strip it and then order parts it causes a problem for everybody it's a fairly old car so we can't be pumping lots of expensive new parts in so what we've done for this one we have brought a complete second-hand unit now it's good as you can hear there's no movement there or there's no play there like the other one um, that is obviously it's designed to do that the boots look good it's a bit rusty but I mean you know it's been out of the car for a while but you know it all looks good and this goes back to the question of when do you use second-hand parts what parts can you use and, and all this it really does depend on the car it depends on time situation for example if I um, the CV joint yeah I could have one tomorrow that's not a problem or I could have one out of order one ready for today um, but if the CV joint is good and it's the drive shaft well to try and get a brand new drive shaft from Nissan is going to be too expensive so we'd have to go down the second hand route but that could mean this car being here for two or three days by the time I can get one so he needs his car and I need it off the lift so for this particular job in this case it's better we ordered a, a complete second hand unit and to completely replace a second hand unit now so you heard the noise what we are going to also do is replace the gearbox oil now i believe in some of these nissans and it could be this one but i'm not 100 percent sure but i'll check it out some of them do actually take engine oil in the gearbox not gear oil um but we'll we'll find all that out first thing i'm going to do is drain just where my finger is i'm going to drain the gearbox oil out um no point me showing you it's just a big drain plug at the bottom once I've drained that out, we can actually start undoing the actual um, CV joint and drive shaft. If I just get you in here, see where my finger is, right there. Hopefully you can see that. Get some light on it. Right there is the gearbox drain and the gearbox fill then is just up here at the front of the gearbox. I'm going to drain that and then we'll get cracking with this fella. Right, taking off the actual gearbox drain plug I don't know if you're gonna see this but there is a lot of filings on this you can see I'm moving around this is a magnet here and there's a lot of filings um, this could be a sign of things to come obviously it's not great seeing filings because it means something is, is is worn and or getting worn if you can see if I wipe all that off just how shiny that is looks like a 12 year old girl going to a disco um, so yeah just kind of always keep an eye on that um, you'll know when your gearbox is going because it'd be hard to get into gear it'd be crunchy it'd be making noises but when you kind of see all the filing on on here you know there's maybe maybe it hasn't got long to go um, so just want to keep an eye on it make sure you give this a good clean before you put it back in there's no point putting all this crap files back in um but something to keep an eye on lovely all right i was just talking to myself there for a few minutes and now the bloody camera turned on i've just removed the split pin from here um looks like a 30 mil 30 32 mil let's maybe get a long reach one on that so we need to remove the split pin or the cut pin from america uh 
This bolt actually holds the drive shaft onto the hub. Then we've got two suspension bolts up here which hold the hub onto the actual shock. Now hopefully we'll have, once we release them bolts, we'll have enough room. These are 17mm bolts. The bolt for removing the um, sump drain plug was an S13 square drive. So as you can see, it's square and it's an S13. That's what removes the actual sump uh, draining plug. So that's what we've got to do. Hopefully we'll have enough room. If we don't, we'll have to take off the track rod end. But the problem is taking the track rod end is it doesn't look great. You know, you can break things, you can do all sorts. So the less we have to take off, the better. If we do have to take it off, we'll take it off. If it breaks, we'll have to replace it. It's as simple as that. But hopefully with removing this bolt and these two up here, we should have enough room to pop the old drive shaft out. That's why we drain the oil first, because we leave the oil in and try and uh, pull this out. We're just going to get oil everywhere. It's not the end of the world, but, you know, it's just easier. So first thing I'm going to do is get this fella off. And it is a 32 mil. Now, it is very rusty looking. This could be... a bit hard to get off but with this fella should get it off great power in this there we go it's off next problem we could have but lucky enough we don't on this one is sometimes this can be seized inside the hub which does make things a nightmare um, if it is the way I do it is I've got a little air chisel and I put it in there and the vibration takes it off um, now, if you are replacing it, it doesn't matter if you hit the end of it with a hammer. If you are putting it back, you can't really do that because you will damage the threads. So what you can sometimes do is screw the old bolt on and hit it that way. Uh, you still have to be careful. So, but hopefully you like me in this one and it's not bloody seized. Now, whip off these two 17 mils at the top. There we go. Lovely. Now, take them out. Sometimes you just push the top of the actual uh, disc. These come out a lot easier. Take off the washer, the magnet. There you go. Now, this should come out of the shock you do have to be careful as you can see with the brake line here you get a bit more light things a bit easier a bit of light in there so you do have to be careful with the brake line but hopefully we should have enough room but it's not looking like we do right so we have two options here we can disconnect this clip here or we can take off the brake caliper Disconnecting the clip would be the easiest way first. But even sometimes with that, you don't have enough room. And if it's a really rusty clip, I wouldn't advise you doing this. But this clip isn't rusty. So just remove the clip. That should then allow the brake line to be pushed through, which uh, we like that. And as you can see, that gives me a lot more room. And hopefully it gives me enough room. And there we go. We do have enough room. It's going to be interesting to see exactly what's failed in here. Now, look at that. That, I can't even lift that up now. That's seized. Whatever's failed in there has failed in a big way. We will strip that and see. But as you can see, that is one that, now, it doesn't want to move. So it does look like the CV joint has actually failed. Maybe the little balls in it, one of the, the carriers has come loose, I'm not sure. But that's what it does kind of look like there. Um, so, he was lucky if that's the case. Because if that had completely went, he would, the car would have just broke down, it wouldn't have drove anymore. So, um, kind of lucky that uh, it was still driving. Now we need to pop out the cup, which can be a nightmare. I'm getting visions of Ford Transit Connect here, and uh, not good. Ah, came off lovely. Just got a lever bar. That's how it should come off, not like the stupid Ford Transit. 
So I just got this lever bar and I wedged it. I hope you could see what I was doing, maybe not. So you just got the lever bar and just got it here and wedged it, wedged it there and this slid out nice and easy, how it should do, not like the Ford Transit Connect. So there we go. And as you can see, I can't, now it's moving, but it's really, it's really rough and it's stuck there now again. So we need to replace this. Before you do it, obviously make sure it's the same length, same everything before you put it in, make sure the splines are the same, so otherwise it won't fit. And if it's too long or too short, you're going to have serious problems, so it has to be exactly the same length. Right, so this is the right one. Same length and everything, which is obviously a good sign. So we need to get it back. It can be sometimes tricky to get this in, so you need to turn it to make sure it hits the splines. But it also needs to go in. There we go. You heard a big click and it's gone in. What I was doing there was I was turning at the same time, because if you don't have the splines lined up, it never come in. So by turning it and pushing at the same time, it should just clip in nice and easy, like it has. Now, same again with this side. I might be in the way of the camera, but you're gonna get the idea. Just push that down, lift it up, give it a bit of a twist, and it should just pop itself in nice and handy. I'm just gonna put this here for the minute just so it doesn't pop back out again. Really is as simple as that. And now what we can do is just replace the bolts. So I'll get that down. Again, sometimes needs a bit of a wiggle. Put it through. Bit of a wiggle again. There we go. So they're both through. Don't forget to actually put back your brake line. If this clip is rusty or even looks bad, or this connection looks bad, just take off the caliper because uh, you'll cause yourself a lot more problems if you don't. Give a little love tap. Now, I have finally given in to the torque Nazis that I get on most of my videos. So, from now on, we're going to be using two different types of torque settings. We're going to be using a German type of torque setting and we're going to be using a grunt torque setting. So, the German torque setting is Guten type. The grunt setting has three settings. It has, for all you torque Nazis out, oh, I mean torque Nazis out there. So it has three settings. It has a small grunt, a medium grunt, and a big grunt. Simple. So, this one's going to be a big grunt. Going, yeah, big grunt. These are going to be medium, possibly big. You know, we'll, we'll decide when we get there. And uh, that's it. That's our torque settings. Simple. It just, it just is simple. I'm going to put the bolt that this drive shaft came with. So, Put the old uh, washer in. Well, actually, we don't need to put the washer in with this particular one, because this one has a washer already on it. And this one, which you can't quite see, but it has a special, the bolt slightly off, well, it's not round when it gets to the top, slightly been pinched in which this is a lock nut essentially. So it means you don't need a split pin with this type. And that's too small now, too big. The 30 mil rather than the 32. So we don't need a lock. So we don't need a uh, split pin. Now, if the split pin, which it is, there is enough room for a split pin. Just for the hell of it, I'm gonna put one in, but you don't need it with this type of um, uh, nut. Ah, that's good and tight. But I will show you the large grunt setting on this nut. Now, it's just so we're all on the same page. Now, what you need is a screwdriver. Simple. A big long bar. You will have to practice this because, you know, this comes with experience. This is a heavy grunt, so 
you know, you might want to get a couple of nuts and bolts out there and do a bit of practicing. Um, but this is now a heavy or a high grunt. This is the big one. And you need the right face, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to fill my face. Well, I'll try from here, but it's not going to really work. But you get the idea. You need, it's, it's the face that does it. So you that gets, you get the idea. That is now factory spec torque settings. What you don't want to do is forget to put the gearbox oil back in. Now, I've done loads of videos on doing oil in gearboxes, so I'm not going to film. I'm going to do it exactly the same way. I'm going to pump it in with the little pump I got. Um, no point in filming it, but make sure you put it in. So, these two ones left. Well, I'm going to have to get the split pin before I forget. So, we don't really need it, but just in case, it's no harm. It's a nice and big one. Better to be safe than sorry. If you are unsure, put one in. I mean, it's as simple as that. It is going to be no harm if it's there. It's just, yeah. Even though normally it is these type, the castle bolts, that normally take them. I know that won't come loose. This is just, it's just there because I, ca I basically can. It's not because we really need it. But like I said, no harm to have it. I'll go over them and I think that's going to be a good and tight setting. Yeah. Um, always, always check your bolts by hand. Even if you're using air guns, doesn't really matter. Um, always come back and just check them by hand because you can't really get a feel with these. So I'm going to come back, do it by hand. Ooh, ah. Maybe I'll change it to a grunt. Ah. Yeah. There we go. So, right, that really is it. Um, as you can hear now, making a little bit of a noise, but they all do, but not nothing like what it was doing. There's always a little bit of play in them. But most importantly, there's no play up and down. That other one, there was a big play up and down, and there's absolutely nothing up and down. All I've got to do is fill this with gear oil, put the steering wheel, uh, put the steering wheel on, <laughs> put the wheel on, and that is it. So that's going to be it. That's how you do it. What we are going to do is we're going to go on the vice, and we're going to see exactly what's wrong with this other one, see if we can see what actually failed. All right, let's see. All I've done is I've taken off the clips, and I've just split it a little bit. Hopefully, I should be able to just pull this completely off. There we go. Let's get it out of the way. See anything. Um, there's too much play in and out, but there's also play up and down. But it's just really, really stiff. It's not as free flowing. Doesn't seem to be a lot of grease in there, but yet the boot wasn't split and there was no grease around the car. Um, so, I can't see anything obvious. Well, actually I can. Um, the balls look very, very rusty and very, very pitted, um, which doesn't help. And if they're pitted and the surface they rub on is pitted and they're not smooth, that will kind of do that. So they've obviously shrunk well, not shrunk, but they've worn. Shrunk's the wrong word. Because there is, there's too much play up and down. There's a lot of play up and down, which there shouldn't be. A bit of play in and out is no problem. You can even hear that noise. That just shouldn't be like that. A little bit of noise and a little bit of play, but not that much. So that is just, I was hoping maybe something failed or broke. But that is just completely worn. That's just a, an absolute worn part. Um, so most probably could have got away with just replacing the CV joint in this particular case. Um, but we got the whole shaft cheaper than what we'd even just get the CV joint for. And like I said, I just wasn't sure. And for time and for money and everything, it was just easier for me and the customer to replace the whole thing with a second-hand unit. Because if I'd have got this stripped, there was no point putting it back together. And if it was going to take me a couple of days to get apart, well then, you know, we're all basically screwed and I have other jobs on today. Um, 
So yeah, it is just a worn part. There is nothing to show here, unfortunately. I was hoping for something maybe a bit more exciting, but no. But there you go. So that's it. 2000 uh, Nissan Almira TV joint replacement. Hope it helps. Thumbs up, subscribe, and all that. Um, links to our uh, GoFundMe project, to our Facebook, to our um, forum. That's it. So any questions, what I'm trying to get is everyone to go to my forum and ask questions there because I need other mechanics to basically essentially help me with questions. And we can get like a, you know, a frequently asked question. So if someone's having a problem with missing, well, then there'll be a load of answers on there to kind of help you. Because at the minute I'm struggling to try and answer everyone's questions and run this place and do the videos and everything. It just takes so long. So if you can answer, if you can ask questions on my forum and sign up and that goes to everybody, I need other mechanics um, well, well, mechanics, but other people that have done jobs and come across things. So when someone asks a question, other people can answer and it just kind of take the pressure off me. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.